at Indie Film Cafe Spotlight with... G. Larry Butler. G. Larry Butler. Who did he play, Paul? Al Purplewood in oh. Double D Avenger. That's what he loves the most. Um, is, is that right? I love Creature Blood Cove too, <laughs> but you know, Double D Avenger is the one that really got my heart. Yeah, pretty notorious role, yeah. Uh, so uh, you don't have to think too hard about the double entendre on that, that <laughs> name. <laughs> That's great. And it's been a while now, right? It's been uh, yes, years? Yes, since we're clo getting close to 20 getting years. 20 years, wow. It came out in 2001. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm trying to talk the director into having a retrospective. And a that would be great. Like a Blu-ray with commentary. Yes, and absolutely. That would yeah. be fabulous. Rent, rent a theater. And uh, I think we're going to do that. That's great. So a That's couple great. more years. I might so. be down for that one if that yeah. happens. She, I'm still here. Some of the girls aren't, but uh, I was going to ask if you're if yeah. you're in touch with with some of the folks. Well, Haji passed I away. I know Haji passed. Away. Yeah, uh, Kitten is still around. I had lunch with her about a year ago, okay. and uh, she's still doing movies, and so am I. So, yeah, um, hopefully we can. I wanted to talk to the director into doing a sequel, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I don't know. He's kind of iffy on that right now. So I, we'll have we have talked it. about that and about how you know I could see yeah. Kitten sort of handing her costume down to the <laughs> next generation. You know, a granddaughter or right. something. Of course, she becomes the next one. Yeah, I thought there was going to be a nice like little twist at the end with the uh, the was it the uh, uh, the lady who sent her down there went down yeah. to get some more stuff and then she was going to be like the villain or something and then oh, going to fight you know right. Kitten. I just thought. There's so much they could have done with it. You yeah, know. he actually wrote a script for number two. But, uh, he's sitting on it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't and know. then, of course, you, there's... You'll you know, have to write to him or call him and tell him you want to see it. Sure, sure. He gets petition these days. Yeah. yeah, petition him. But um, obviously, you've been in a lot more stuff, so maybe you could maybe talk to us about some of the work sure. that you've done over your career. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, well, it all started in Denver. Long, long time ago, back in '85, okay. I took acting lessons, and uh, then I started doing commercials right away. And then I became print, uh, a print uh, uh, actor. If you're not familiar with that, that's a person who does uh, things for magazines, oh, mm -hmm. just stills, just like holding up a beer or shampoo or whatever. And I became the hardest working character actor in Denver. And Denver used to be the hub of all the print. Uh, in the world, I know that. they were the the very center, and so I'd go to and I'd actually work for different com countries, and uh, they'd come here. I wouldn't go there, unfortunately. Oh but, man, uh, that would have been nice. Yes, like, I, yeah. Yeah. so I became. Um, I'm in a lot of different boxes of cough rem remedies and things like that in Sweden and you you name it, Finland and and all over the place. So uh, <clears throat> when I left there, I had to make a decision. Do I want to come here to Hollywood and uh, roll the dice with the movies and the TV or stay with the print? Or they, I didn't even audition most of the time. They just called my agent and said we want Because I had that kind of a very expressive face and you know, living cartoon, they called me. <laughs> so it was either me or some other guy. And we were two, we were battling head to head. And, and actually the last year I was there because I didn't, I stopped uh, my renting. Uh, I went with him, he, I paid him $25 a month to live with he and his wife, and so they put me up, and we were competitors, but very friendly competitors, mm. so anyway, I, I uh, <clears throat> digress. Um, I, uh, after that, I uh, did a few TV uh, series, Father Dowling was big at the time, mm -hmm. um, with uh, Tom Bosley, yep. and uh, then uh, MGM came to town, called the Women's Club. And uh, I, I auditioned for the role, and uh, I was friendly with the, the the casting director, who happened to be the director when she came to visit. She was uh, Sandra Roland Weintraub. And Weintraubs are very big in this yeah. town, and uh, her father was Fred Weintraub, a producer, and she was the ex-girlfriend of Martin Scorsese. Wow. Oh wow! So, yeah. So when I landed that job, I couldn't believe it. And uh, apparently, uh, John Candy had actually been handed a role, but he bailed on the project. So when I got it, I, I wasn't that much overweight at the time, but they asked me if I could gain weight, like in a month, uh, 30, at least 30 pounds. Pizza and beer works wonders, and oh, I yeah. did it. 
<clears throat> so I showed up a little chubbier than I was, but I could, I wasn't anywhere near what John Candy was, of course, but anyway, it worked out. And then, so I had the co-starring role with Maude Adams from Octopussy. Um, um, who else? Uh, Michael Pere from Pere? Streets of Fire right. and Eddie Velez from A-Team. Okay. So the, the four of us. So what film Arnold. was this? It's called The Women's Club. The Women's it Club. It was uh, written by uh, uh, the director. And she, um, it was about a man who was a script writer in Hollywood, but he couldn't really make it. He, none of his scripts got picked up, so he became a prostitute. For, it was a comedy, of course, oh. but uh, yeah, he became a prostitute for women. So were you were, were you were that guy? Or? I was not that guy. Okay. Michael Pere was. Okay. And Eddie Velez was a friend, and I was a reporter sent to spy on him and get oh. the dirty scoop. Is and that so available for people to watch? It might be. Uh, if not, I might have um, access to a movie <laughs> yeah, we'd or love two. To see that. I can probably send it to you. Um, so anyway. Um, that was done in 1986, and on the strength of that, I came to Hollywood. And I got very lucky again. I got one of the best agents in town, film artists, uh, right on Hollywood Boulevard, right across from the SAG headquarters. Mm. And I, I did all of that. And um, I, yeah, was, my agent was amazing. They uh, had Peter Graves as a client. Uh, okay. Anybody back there old enough to remember? Sure, I sure, love sure. Peter Graves. Peter and I mean, Graves. you've been in what two hundred plus movies? Yeah, a little bit more than that, <clears> actually. But uh, wow. I've found even more, but they're not up yet. So I'm trying like to not up on IMDb, them. Yet, huh? Not wow. yet, but uh, I quite uh, a career. Yeah, I was hustler. Uh, <clears throat> don't hustle as much. I don't have the energy like I used to. But I used to chase everything, you know. <laughs> but uh, that's what you, you have, have to. to do. You, you have, have to in this town, sure. Because yeah. there's a million actors out there, and they're all and trying to go for your role. You they know? all are. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, I just got uh, fortunate. Now that I'm older, um, for every wrinkle I get, I get another job. So right now, believe it or not, I'm. I'm, I'm reading my scripts for six different projects. Oh, that's and it awesome. was the perfect storm. It all came together at the same time, and I was afraid this would happen. And now they all want me at various times in the next month or two. And so I'm like, well, how do I prepare for all of these scripts and study my lines? But I have to do it. So, And they're all different. You know, they're different, uh, different genres, uh, different characters. Some are uh, serious, some are funny. So it's... Whenever you complain about something, you know, be careful what you complain about. And I have no <laughs> doubt you're going to be great in all of them. Oh, God, I don't know. Thank you. Well, but, you're uh, always like, it seems <clears throat> to me from what I've seen so far of your work, you seem to be the person who definitely sticks out. And um, and I've never seen a bad performance for me. Right, right. It's always the performance that was perfect for that role. So, like, oh. when, like, Al Purplewood, for example, like, there's a lot of ways people could have done that character sure. and they could have made it really bad you know but you took that character and made it so fun that yeah. everybody enjoyed it i have to be over the top to compete with all those <laughs> trooper and assassins you know they're, they're so busty you know they, they would steal the show just by sure. walking into the room just their so boobs I, just steal the show yeah, right? right you know they're, i was surrounded by boobs and, uh, where did the german girl come from i'll feel oh hit breaks god. oh my god uh there's a story behind that. Oh, he died in She because brought her boyfriend the to the chicken set. chicken dance was the most I know. Well, memorable thing of all time. Yeah. Uh, Bill <laughs> is very creative. Uh, William Winkler, who wrote it and directed it and produced it. He's really a genius at this stuff. And he wrote that. And uh, there's probably a story you can get from him about how he did it. I forget now how he did it. But, yeah, uh, when she grabbed me by the crotch and lifted me up, remember that? I mean, she grabbed me. So hard. She actually just <clears throat> grab your yes crotch. Well, she did uh, wow. more than the crotch, but uh, I had to wear a guard because <laughs> when we did it in rehearsal, she was like really, and her boyfriend put her up to it. So they kicked him off the set. <laughs> it became a closed set, thank God. Yeah, because he was demonic. But um, anyway, she was <laughs> slightly like that too. But I don't want to speak ill of uh, the past. But uh, anyway, uh, we got through it and. Um, I, I really enjoyed all of the scenes that I did with, with everybody, Kitten, uh, especially. Uh, and um, it's just, uh, you have to see it. So uh, he's going to put it back up. I took it off momentarily, but it'll probably be back online and YouTube and Amazon and all of that. 
momentarily. Uh, we're, we're physical copies, guys. We like to have the physical medium. So yeah. <clears throat> we like to have like the DVDs yeah, right. and. So yeah. if it comes out in Blu-ray, William, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm yeah. buying it. All right. You, did I already send you the VHS? Or you, or you gave it. You to gave me? it to me, but unfortunately, this is going to be bad. I haven't told you this yet. But when I got on my Uber, I left it there. And then oh. so I asked them to bring it back and stuff or whatever, and <laughs> the guy never did. So that's all right. I'll give you another one. <laughs> Thank I have you. I have a few hundred copies. <laughs> so if anybody else there wants one of those VHS Virgin shrink wrapped. Nice. So let nice, them go. Nice, and nice. I'll even autograph them for you. Awesome. Just uh, contact me later through this website. Awesome. So um, yeah, and then after that, uh, that was when I first came to Los Angeles. One of my first movies. Uh, this funny story about meeting uh, Mr. Winkler. Uh, they asked for somebody who could uh, imitate Jackie Gleason. And I thought, oh, God, I love that guy. And I don't know how I'm going to stack up against all the other people in Hollywood because there's so many gifted actors here. And, but I'm going to try. So I, I always go in character. I dressed in purple. Nice. And I went over there, and I remember this trick from John Madden. I walked in the room and threw my script, all six pages, into the air. They fluttered down, and I just gave a flawless delivery and Winkler was laughing so hard he fell over in his chair and nice. I went over to pick him up I don't know if I can say this uh, but I will he said I got two guys coming for callbacks tomorrow but fuck them you got the job <laughs> that's <laughs> great that's, the truth. that's awesome and that's how we met so I got I did that one I did the Frankenstein versus the creature with him right. then I did about 40 uh, Japanese anime projects right you did a lot of voice a lot of different voices that's uh, great. usually the major voices in, in each thing but uh, like um, uh, Fist of the North Star and um, Star Zinger captains harlock and there's so many different but it was so much fun to do and uh, then we did ultraman there's four movies coming out live action and animation combined wow and i did the voices for some of the big ones so dr groman and atelgar and some of those so mm. it was amazing to work with them on that and, uh, that's great so anyway hoping for more but uh do you want me to continue? Well, I just, yeah, um, I just want to ask, uh, like, what's your, I mean, I know this is going to be tough for you because you've done over 200 movies and probably close to 300, and if not more, I don't know. No, <laughs> yeah. no, it's a little over 200. A little over 200. Yeah. But you've, you've done so much. Can you tell us, like, what was your favorite production to be on that? Like, not saying, like, all the other ones weren't bad, were bad, but, like, you know, what was the one that you go, okay, this is, this is it? Well, I have different favorites for different reasons. Okay. Uh, Obviously, my first one was was quite a quite a hoot to do, uh, the women's club, and then working with Bill Winkler is always fantastic. And I, I'd have to say Double D. And, Double D. Uh, yeah, and that was a lot of fun too. It looked like it was a fun production. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was even the blooper reel was a lot of fun. Cause there's a lot of, oh yeah, well, you know, you, I'm glad he included mistakes that. and but, but they're fun. You right, know? right. We didn't have that many, but when they when they were uh, made, they were. Quite, quite, mm -hmm. you know, outrageous. I, I like when he was dressed up like the Double D Avenger. Well, William Winkler was doing a lot of the. That uh, was his wife, was actually. His wife? Desiree oh. Winkler, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she, even she, the booby bounce, I thought that was well yeah, done. Yeah, right. So. She she was the stunt woman for that. Uh, That's cool. But uh, some other stuff that I've done. Uh, one recently that I've done is uh, called. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's called. Uh, uh, Fortune Defies Death. Fortune Defies Death. And it was uh, done by a couple from Hong Kong and uh, a husband-wife team. And uh, I played this uh, very wealthy person who leaves his fortune to whoever could solve the murder of his uh, daughter, his adopted daughter. And uh, so it's really a mystery, a film noir, and uh, it's, it, it's amazing. And it's out there right now. And you can get it through Best Buy and probably Amazon too. Okay. Um, yeah, Fortune Defies Death. Nice. It's a very serious one. And uh, one, I, I need a shout out to Tim Polari, who uh, just interviewed me in Boston. I flew back there. And, um, he's an old friend of mine, and he cast me in something called Pan Man. And I don't know if I sent that to you or not. Uh, you you sent that to me. That. Yeah, and you sent that to so, me for sure. So right, we, I need it still. To see it. I uh, still haven't, but I do, I do yeah, want to see it. I know it's on my list. One of my favorites of all time. It's a horror comedy. And
and uh, so I played a culinary professor at cooking school nice. who chases this demon all over the place. <laughs> this demon wears a pot on his head and uh, he kills all my students in the process, and, or most of them. Uh, so we're, we form a posse to try to track them down. And Cato Kalin's in it. <laughs> and, you know, just all kinds of stuff. That and, just uh, sounds awesome. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, and there's Did you work with here. Cato? I didn't. No, he was in the last scene of the movie, which I can't give away. But, uh, okay. but I, I've met him before. Uh, yeah, that's I good. Was in a, I, I, we don't have a lot of time, I'm sure, that I can't tell you stories about Cato Kalin. But <laughs> I, I, I have one me, meeting Milton Berle. Nice. Oh, uh, nice. You know, a hard man to meet because he has a like, 30 year old wife. Well, he's passed now, but he was like 90 and had a 35 year old wife. And That's the way to do it. I went to a friar's roast, which are hard to get into because they're usually close to the public. So I went and paid 150 bucks for a plate, you know. And uh, so I thought, I'm going to get a lot of great pictures with all these celebrities. Well, I went over to Milton Burrow and his wife said, What the hell are you doing here? Get out of here. So I went back with my tail between my legs, and Cato said, what, where's your balls, man? Wait till he goes to the restroom, and you know she will eventually go back and ask him, and I'm sure he's really good about it. So I went back, and they were doing a roast on Tom, uh, Roseanne's wife. Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold. And uh, so I went back, and Milton looked at me like, are you the one? And I thought for a second, like, he thinks I'm Tom Arnold. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one. And he said, put your head on my shoulder. So there's two heads on one body, and my friend will take the picture. Great. So I got away with this on my wall. And <laughs> you'll see it on the way down. But That's awesome. I got a brag wall there. We'll, have to, we'll have to take a, a video of it. At the, yeah, just um, about everybody I, I've worked with. I noticed yeah. that creature, the Frankenstein versus the creature from Blood Cove. Yeah. To me, that seemed like it was a little more serious. It wasn't quite as wacky and... Yes you know, lighthearted. It, it seemed like he was going for something a little more. I need to tell you about that. Uh, that's a very serious piece of work. It <clears throat> yeah. was an homage to the 30s and 40s monster, classic monster right. movies. Like we actually won first prize, best feature at the World Horror Fest nice. in 2006. And that that's one of the premier horror festivals in the world. And it was really, really good. And what really struck me is, I mean, it seemed like your role was much expanded. You, you had a lot more going on in, in that movie than you did with Double the Avenger and you know I mean he can tell you I was the whole time of like you know your brother's doing such a great job he could absolutely carry a movie by himself thank you this is yeah. fabulous yeah somebody did uh, quote I mean posted uh, why aren't you doing more mainstream work seriously so I was like well I just don't have the, the luck I guess of having the best agent but uh, you know I've changed agents several times like most people in this town so I get most of my stuff by myself Hmm. So that was, um, you know, that's what I've been doing for most of my life. I've got a few things through agents, but uh, most of the stuff I do it through Echo Cast or whatever. And uh, my my daughter takes like what you're doing now, to, takes the film and uh, I mean, but through her cell cell phone, and then uh, we submit it. And I've gotten a lot of work that way. But even that's before good. that, I was getting work that way and. Uh, so other things that I've done that just stand out or just, um, I, when I came to town, I, uh, you know, I, I guess I would, like everybody, you know, you've done a movie and you think, well, I'm going to take the world by storm, right? So I went to various agencies. William Morris threw me out of their lobby. I couldn't even get in to see anybody. Wow. And then I went over to somebody called Joan Mangum. She was the biggest print agent in town. So when I went into there, they... They kind of did the same thing, except I begged them to like, please give my book to Joan and show her. And uh, they, they finally relented and said, okay, we'll do it. So the secretary came back blushing, kind of embarrassed. He said, Joan wants to see you. And I looked around the corner. Here is like a football field long office. Joan's at the inner desk going like that. That's great. And so I, I signed with her and I became one of her uh, best character print models. but. That was a thrill to work with her, but then she married a billionaire and quit. Wow. So then I, after that, it wasn't as easy. So, but uh, I, I did uh, Beetleborgs here. That was fun. I did a TV series called Beetleborgs, um, and I, uh, when I went in to interview, uh, you know, I, I always act over the top, and people tell right. me you would have been great in the 40s and 50s. 
uh, because that's when everybody was big. Mm -hmm. But right now, everybody wants it to tone down. But for this cartoon series for kids, they loved it. In fact, they, they, they were sarcastic. They said, could you bring that up a couple notches? You know, they're, actually, they were thrilled, and they, they hired me to do that. So I did the last episode of The Beetleborgs. Yes. And they wanted me as a recurring role, but they quit after that last episode and that was the end of that so oh I that would have been great yeah i played rudy mcdougall i i saw I that my, on your resume my um, brains got sucked out by the uh, brain sucker i know one of the guys that worked happens. worked on is uh, adam rifkin and i don't know if you're that sounds familiar you know familiar with his work and everything he's a fantastic director um i'm hoping to meet up with him later sometime you know or whatever but he's a yeah. he's a really great guy I've, I've interviewed him a few times and he's just very friendly but he loves b movies and beetleborgs yeah. was basically a, a b movie tv show you know and everything yeah. for kids you know i actually got to work with mama uh, it's a thing called mama dolly with uh, zelda rubenstein from poltergeist oh, oh my god that's yeah, awesome one of her last performances she wanted to take me home <clears throat> with her but I, nah. I wouldn't do it she got really mad <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh well, uh, well i mean I'm what so stories said, could you have well, had with gone, that Jeez. <laughs> yeah i i played this sheriff that uh was scolding my deputy for arresting her because she, she did something with her car it was wrong so it was a lot of fun working with her that's fun so you know, once in a while i get to work with a celebrity and it's like uh, you just have to remove the stars from your eyes put them aside and treat them work. like they're everybody else yeah. you know yes yeah. it seems but, like uh, you've got a lot going on you know i follow you on your facebook page and uh you know it's <laughs> always doing something i noticed you're in a in a dune buggy down in Baja oh yeah and, and, I always try to do something adventurous. Yeah. I had a friend uh, who was in the Moonrakers band in the 60s and 70s, and, and I met him in the 80s in Denver, uh, Den uh, Denny Flanagan, and uh, so we've kept in touch. And, and uh, I haven't seen him, though, physically in over 30 years, so we went down there, to, and he's living down there in San Felipe, so he's got a dune buggy, acts like a 15-year-old kid. That's you know, great. This, God, he was scaring me, because <laughs> I don't scare too easy, because I used to skydive. For 30 years but but he was going down these you know d down these sandstone cliffs and, and up and down and almost rolling the thing and i'm like okay <laughs> i'm like strapped in but anyway um yeah he's and i know another guy named uh, um joe mccourt who uh, used to be with the grateful dead he's a good friend of mine he lives on the coast here and so we have lunch together and but he was uh, he's like uh they're doing a documentary on, on his life. So we, I wrote this little thing uh, called, from Mice and Men. It was a you know, book by Steinbeck. Right. And uh, so I wrote the last uh, uh, the few uh, pages of the book. I distilled the, most of the essence of the book in those three pages that I wrote. And uh, so he and I did it. And uh, the, they're gonna put that in a documentary. Nice, that's a, good. A showcase. Nice. So that was a thrill too. But uh, I mean, there's just so many movies. It's like I can't think of all the times that I right. really enjoyed it. But. Well, uh, you know, we've got to wrap this up a little bit. But before we do, can you tell us kind of what uh, what have you been up to lately? Lately, oh my God, I'm working on six different scripts. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, one's uh, called Compatible. It's about uh, the cautionary tale about dating online. Nice. I'm going to do it in Denver. And, Can uh, you tell us kind of what your role is? Or I, no? I play the father who finds out about his daughter's involvement with somebody she met online and trying to caution him or her to be careful and, uh, you know, don't take any chances. But, of course... He doesn't listen. So of course not. I don't want to ruin the story. Well, that's a that's a horror film yeah. for you. It's right a there. horror film. It's a it's a true life horror film. Yeah. And uh, and then another one uh, I'm doing, just love this role because uh, I play a New York guy with a with an accent like uh, where do you park your car and that sort of thing. And <laughs> nice. I play the sleazy agent. That's uh, my my client is a werewolf. Nice. His name <laughs> is yeah, and his name's Elliot, uh, and it's uh, that the. Director producer uh, James Balsamo. <gasps> James Balsamo, actually, yes, uh, we uh, we he's love James. In it. Yeah, uh, and, and it's his baby, and he cast me as his manager. I'm really What's it called? About that. Hollywood Werewolf. Hollywood you know, Werewolf. Yeah. So we're in the middle of doing that. So I have to switch hats, you know, and switch accents and switch characters and personas. And so I'm playing my sax in an alley when the moon is full. That's my hobby <laughs> as the manager. That's great. And, and I used to play the sax 50 years ago. I had to pick it back up and relearn it. 
but uh, it's a lot of fun to work with him. It, oh, okay, great writing, great writing. And uh, another one, um, let's see. Uh, oh, it's, it's one locally from a friend of mine, Frank Amston, who's doing a film noir called um, uh, The uh, Portuguese Bend. Now, Portuguese Bend is just around the bend here. It's, it's a piece of land, but it also, it's a very volcanic, uh, earthquake-prone place. And uh, it's kind of a metaphor for between San Pedro and Palos Verdes is the rich and the poor. And in the middle, it's kind of a rocky, and they have a rocky relationship. So it's about, I, I don't want to give away too much because he's very secretive about this, but it's about the film commission and how corrupt they are. And they're bringing in certain things. And I play a person who, they think is very respectable, and by the end of the movie, you think that you you find out that I'm really not. I'm mm. like the worst villain imaginable. Mm. Nice. So I love playing characters like that, or you know, I use the innocent face, and you know, right. And, and then another one I'm doing right now is called um, uh, the 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 dead won't dis no this the deceased won't desist, which <laughs> means this this deceased won't stop. So. Um, it, it's about a guy who uh, dies and leaves a fortune uh, to all these people and they meet in the cabin and they find out that actually he tricks them. And I play this kind of a, well, kind of a perverted priest type nice. character, yeah. It's you don't see many I've perverted priests like these days. Yeah, I just, you know. Not in film. I, I thought, should I do this? Is it going to ruin my, my whole body of work? But no. I mean, everybody does stuff like that eventually. And, so uh, that's a lot of fun too, and it's it's kind of it's got some thought provoking moments in it. So that's that's three or four of them, and then there's some other ones uh, after that. And I'm, there's an Alabama one called Repulse. Mm. Uh, this uh, director Daniel Emery Taylor. Oh I yeah, in Alabama. And Didn't you work with him before? Yes, on I it's have. always a, or it's only a game. I think I, it's, it's only a game. Yeah, or it's just a game. It's just and a I've game. I've done some other things. It was originally called Fat Chance. And then and they renamed it the Camp Massacre. Yeah, Camp and, uh, Massacre. I've done that one. And then uh, the hospital. Oh, the, oh yeah, you were in the hospital. And banned in several countries. I have not shown him the hospital yet, but that is a yeah. fucked up movie. Yeah, I know. I, I told him I don't want it to. I don't even know if he'd kill like it because one. it's like, it is. It I don't is. want to come back. <laughs> oh, they kill, asked you for the they sequel? They killed me in the first oh, one, okay. so I didn't have to come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen. Too much for me. It's like, funny because. It was like Saw. But times ten. Right. Know, right. Wow. Oh my God. Well, yeah. I bought the. I have the shirt, and I got a copy of the movie um, at a convention back in like 2013. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it was one of their premieres or something, and they were showing it, and I didn't get the chance to watch it there, but I got the DVD, and I was like, ugh, you know. And my friend yeah. Crystal, you know Crystal, um, she <laughs> came with me, and she said it was probably the one movie that. She just needed showers after yeah, watching that movie. It was that bad. And I, I think you might like it, but you might... Uh, well, I'll check it out. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, I actually like you banned. in that, that short film that you sent me, the... Um Oh, downside. Yeah, yeah, I have to give out a uh, shout out really to Dan good. Racer who directed that. That got and a lot more gritty than I was that's expecting. That's one of my favorite shorts of all time. It's yeah. about a guy who was uh, let go. He was fired, and all the people. He was a middle manager, and everybody underneath him was laughing at him and you know being sarcastic. So he kills them all with an yeah. axe. Nice. Except for the last two, but. Uh, it, you got to check that out. I it's think really that's good. on YouTube. Right we here. will because yeah. we are doing a new thing on Indie Film Cafe called Indie Fa Indie Film Cafe Short Film uh, Short Reviews for Short Films. Right. Wow. So we are going to be yeah. doing reviews oh, where it's like quick little five exactly. minute reviews or so, or maybe I think the last one, the first one we just did was seven minutes. Uh, but we we basically do these short reviews, kind of just talking about the things and just getting. Our plan is just to get things out there, you know, yeah, let yeah. people know about films mm -hmm. and projects. Yeah, especially and the stuff. films that we love, and then yeah. the, doing spotlights on the people that we love or in movies that we love. So, excellent. This is really, really great. We're so thankful that you took time out to, to help us out and talk with us. Oh, and, anytime. And, yeah. and we're excited because we are going to be doing a, uh, was it a, well, actually, by the time this airs, this, this episode right here airs on uh, YouTube, we'll already have a, um, uh, was it a, a IFC episode with you? The first episode of season three oh, right. is coming back with uh, we're we're watching a movie on there, and we'll tell you in a little bit. You don't even know yet, I don't think uh, what we're watching. 
And uh, we're excited to hear you're like basically doing uh, do a review with you, you know. Oh, great! Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, I, one more thing, uh, real quick. I did a music video with a friend of mine. His name is John Paul Avoy, and he is a singer. Uh, a very unique sound. So if you can check him out, he goes by Sir John Paul, and he's done a music video, and, huh. and my family and I are in it. I, I play a grandfather who takes care of three young girls, and their parents are not living or gone and so I, I'm trying to raise him <clears throat> and it's one of a couple of videos that he's released recently so you can find him uh, on YouTube, on YouTube from, as well yeah. and <clears throat> so God anyway, bless yeah, YouTube yeah, that was a lot of fun my my I have a young daughter. Everybody thinks she's my granddaughter. So he used her as the granddaughter. That's actually your daughter? Really? I thought it was your granddaughter. Yeah, we thought too. it was your granddaughter. But that's awesome. That's yeah, great. She's only 14. Well, you know, I was at bachelor until I was 56. And then uh, got married and had a child. And so, anyway, so it changes your life. Do, do you think she's going to pick up the acting bug? She's already done it. Nice. Yeah. She's that's been great. in six or seven movies with me. And, uh, wow. She's made one of her own and, uh, for school. Yeah, you uh, said so. she's been doing like video camera stuff and everything. Yeah, yeah, she really knows that. She's really smart at technology. Oh, nice. Incredibly smart. I think she should go into that at some point. Well, good. Uh, as, a, as a future. Maybe we'll put her in a, one of our six like movies and stuff with you, you know. Very good. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, well, she'd be happy to do that. So. How can people reach you? Um, well, I, she, my daughter Bonnie is, uh, just made me some kind of a uh, G. Larry Butler channel. Yay. on YouTube and I think it's up now actually Great. and I'm gonna be starting to post stuff I'm, I'm learning now how to rip and upload so yeah. I mean I'm not really a techie I'm not either I'm trying to learn it but so. we will subscribe and I, I yes. hope everybody else out there does too okay. Indie Film Cafe will be subscribing to, to the yeah. G. Larry Butler uh, YouTube channel and we will send a link down at the bottom of this so that people can subscribe to you as well oh, wonderful. okay and uh, if anybody wants to reach out, I don't know, should I give my email? Or? Sure. Yeah, uh, it's uh, G-E-E-L-A-R-R-Y-64 at gmail.com. Awesome. Guess, uh, so that's if that's anybody that. wants to contact you about film work or just fans in general, yeah. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'd be happy to reply. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much yeah, for thank taking the time much. out of your, I'm um, you sure, much, busy man. schedule yeah, to do it's this. it's fun to talk about this stuff. I, it's, a, it's passion, you know. It's a labor of love, and I keep doing it. And I'm going to do it till I have to be tied to a chair so I don't <laughs> fall out. And give me one line. And to like Eli Wallach, his last movie at 95, he stole a whole scene from a room full of A-listers because he did a whistle or a hand gesture or something, and he, he stole their thunder. That is so stuff, funny. But they had to tie him to the chair. Wow. So I was like, I keep doing it till I have to be tied. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Fabulous. You, you're definitely hardcore uh, person, and, and yeah. we love it. We thank you very much. Thanks, we Paul. absolutely love it. So thank you so much for thank taking the so time much. out of your schedule to do this. And, and everybody should check out your work and look you up on IMDb. We'll have all the links down there below. So thank you so much. And you I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Yay. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.